Hi, folks. Peter Lemieux for Melissa Gilbert at Insurance Exam Queen. Today, I want to talk about test taking, not about insurance, but how to take a test. There's there's a game in taking a test. I recall this experience. My 12-year-old grandson said to me, Grandpa, do you want to play Stratego? I had never played Stratego. And I said, sure, tell me the rules. And he gave me a three-minute run-through of the rules, and we started to play. I got destroyed. I never had a chance. And then I realized after the game that he knew all the rules, he knew all the intricacies, and I didn't know what I was doing. I never had a chance to win that game. So when I was thinking about this in regards to a test, there's a certain gamesmanship that goes on with a test. Some people just get it. You ever know people who just, they can take a test and it just, they blow right through it and get a good grade. And other people, it's kind of like me playing that game. No one really gave me the rules. Now I can't do a comprehensive one in these few minutes, but let me just give you a few ideas. First of all, your test questions are divided into three things. There's three different topics that are covered and they're pretty equally covered. A third of your questions are going to be on terminology. I call it vocabulary. Do you understand the words? A third of the questions are on numbers. That would be dollars, days, dates. How many years is your license good for? Uh, there's quite a few questions on numbers. And another third is they give you a practical situation and you have to figure out what is the solution. I call those questions like a mystery. The question gives you the clues. You got to look at the clues and then find the answer in the question. So that's the first thing is the types of questions you're going to get. Some of the questions are direct answer. They'll give you a question. Which company pays dividends? And they'll give you four choices. And then another set of questions, they'll finish the sentence. They'll give you a half a sentence and you have to finish. Dividends are paid by. It's the same question, but they, they make you find the end of the sentence, right? So one is a direct question. You find the answer. The other is we give you the scenario. You find how to finish the sentence. And the third question is the one that you have to prepare for. It's the accept question. Most of the time when you get an accept question, when you read the question carefully, they tell you all of the answers are correct except. So you got to think to yourself, there's three correct answers here. And they're looking for the one that isn't correct. Now they could say all of the answers are incorrect, in which case you would be look accept, then you would be looking for the correct answer. So first and foremost rule of taking a test, read and understand the question. If you got the questions figured out, it makes finding the solution, at least you have a better chance at it, right? So read the questions and understand it. Now, occasionally they will show you some questions I would call kind of snotty or tricky questions. Um, one is the double negative. Um, the double negative question. Um, if I were to say to you, she does not have no money. <laughs> no, no one talks like that, but that's a double negative, not and no. If I say she does not have no money, that means she's got some money, right? So when you have two negatives, it can cancel each other out. I don't want you to freak out about that one. They don't do that one as much. What they really like to do is the accept questions. And before you jump into answers, please just think for a minute. You do not have to rush through your test. What does this question really mean? All of the following are correct, except, and you got to say to yourself, before I start, three of these are correct answers. So we're going to eliminate the correct ones. That brings me to the next tip. When you're going to answer a question, 
you thoroughly understand the question and you see some answers that are absolutely impossible, that can't be the answer, eliminate it. If I eliminate two out of four questions and I have to guess, I now have one chance out of two instead of one chance out of four. Eliminate the ones you know cannot be right. So that increases your odds. I want to mention, I hope I can make sense of this. When you have two answers that are synonymous, meaning they mean the exact same thing, neither of them can be correct. So for example, if I have as answers to my questions, non-cancelable and cannot raise rates, the, the non-cancelable policy cannot raise rates. So those answers really describe the same policy, which means it, we can't have two right answers. So if one is the same as the other, obviously both have to be wrong because you can't have, if they put two answers that are the same thing, know that those two throw them out because they can't have two same answers. Now I wanna tell you one last thing on this little tip. What if you have two opposite answers? Two completely opposite answers. Can never raise rates, can raise rates. You just found the answer to your question. When there are two opposites, one is right and one is wrong. If it's asking for the right answer, it has to be one of those two. If it asks for the wrong answer, it has to be one of those two. If they're opposite, your answer is in those two. So you can throw the other two out. Now, you may have to watch this video a couple times to kind of get this clear. But if you can get these little test taking tips down, it would be like me understanding Stratego rules. I have a better shot with my grandson. Finally, when you take a test, please don't rush Take your time, read that question. In fact, I say, if, you, if you're in, in a room where you can do it, read it out loud twice. I don't care how easy it is, just make sure. And then ask yourself before you look at the answers, what are they asking for here? Because they will describe like five or six different things in a question. But what they're asking for is actually pretty simple when you see the actual question. You know, John... Uh, owns a rental property. John owns a house. John sold the house. John now lives in an apartment. What policy does he need to ensure his contents? There's a lot of scenarios. The house that he sold, forget it. That's not the answer, right? So it's he's got a rental property and he's a renter which is the one that ensures his contents? That question is a little bit easier when we take a look at the question and we throw out information that's just meant to distract us, okay? Um, take your time, understand how to read the question, apply a few simple rules, and all you're doing is you're stacking the odds better in your favor. So I'd love to talk more about this, but this is a couple little tips that I hope are helpful. So I'm signing off. Please go on Insurance Exam Queen's website. There's tons of videos and classes and courses you can take that can get you over the top. Um, hope this was helpful and uh, we'll be making some more in a little bit.